Joel, it turns out this encampment has been here for about four years, if not more. A bit hard to see me see behind me right now, given that it is so dark. There are 15 of these tent cities around the county, at least the ones that officials know about. But from talking to the people here, as well as that business owner, you get a much better picture of what homelessness is and what folks are trying to do about it. When we all drive by a tent city, as hundreds of cars did by this one on South Saunders Street, we think we know the people inside and why they're there. I've had people ride by, laugh at me and point at me and take pictures. I mean, I just ignore it the best that I can. But then you meet Brandon Conine. The fluid on the knee, man, I, I don't know if that come from arthritis. It could have come from gal. He can barely hobble to the store for a drink, but he stopped and talked to us about why he's been living in this tent south of downtown Raleigh for the last four years. I moved here, I met my wife and we got married here and uh, we were together eight years. And then I picked up drinking heavily. I was alcoholic. That was my mistake, which of course, you know, brought me to this situation. Almost like a shanty town going on over there on the on the off ramp on right. South Sonda Street. Days after we met Brandon, we met Brian for an interview. I am trying to get this before it takes a foothold in our city because I judge my city by how well they take care of the most vulnerable people among us. The local business owner didn't want us using his last name, but he told Eyewitness News about the growing problem on the corner. Okay, so what are you willing to, what are you willing to do? Do anything. While we were there, Brandon and Brian talked. Let me ask you this. What would it take for you guys to not be living there? Just everyday work. Everyday work. The homeless crisis is rising by the minute here in Wake County. 1,500 people were counted as homeless in the most recent total. It's up 75% compared to this time last year. It's so much more than what we're seeing on the street. And to your point, that's the one. What about everybody else that we're not seeing? Kim Crawford is the executive director of the Raleigh Wake Partnership to End Homelessness. They're down 200 beds since COVID hit, and they never got those back. Right now, there's also a three week wait to get into a shelter. Where are they supposed to go? And it's January. There's no leaves on the trees, so we see it. I made some bad investments and lost everything I had. So Back behind the tent city, Brandon and his friend retreat to their temporary homes as Brian considers what he saw. I'm hoping that by seeing this, somebody says, oh, I know where that guy is and go give him a shot. Brian, you really get the sense that he had a bit of a change of heart when he came out here and talked to some of these folks. He told me he wants to offer one of them a job or even some sort of an apprenticeship to help them get off their feet. The partnership, meantime, they say that every player, every uh, big time name in the county as well as the city is working on this. But Joel and Lauren, the biggest key here, affordable housing. Back to you. Yeah, and uh, next Wednesday is a big day. That's when the feds over at Housing and Urban Development require cities and counties across the country to take a real-time count of people experiencing homelessness. We'll be watching that here at home as well. Compelling stuff tonight, Josh. Thanks.